Dr. Brewer is the founder and president of World Help, a faith-based humanitarian organization. World Help has touched more than 69 countries and impacted the lives of more than 73 million people in impoverished communities around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Vernon Brewer. Thank you. What an honor it is for me to be here at the center and all of the um, positive things that are being done honor, integrity, patriotism. And I just want to congratulate the center for the great work you're doing and the legacy of passing these values on to the next generation. How important is that? Probably nowhere in the world are values being assaulted as much as in the Middle East. Freedom, democracy, respect for women, things we take for granted here are being fought openly, violently, with evil. It's not something you're going to see on the evening news. But it's the reality of the values that are at risk, values that we hold dear. The Islamic State of Iraq and Syria has seized control of Syria and many parts of Iraq with unstoppable force. More than 11 million Syrians and Iraqis have been forced to flee their homes. Think about that number. And more than a quarter of a million have lost their lives. Many are calling it a holocaust. How many people have to die before we call it a holocaust? One of my Iraqi friends on the ground told me, he said, the nearest thing to this is like what happened in the holocaust in Germany. Just as we saw pure evil with the Nazis, he said, with ISIS we see pure evil. Men and boys are rounded up, blindfolded, and executed in mass burial sites. The women and girls are abducted, sold into marriage, or kept in captivity to be used for heinous acts of sexual violence. He said the ISIS soldiers went to one family where there were kids and they told the kids to convert or be killed and they refused. There were four of them, 15 years of age and younger. He said they beheaded all of them. The other day they cut a four-year-old girl in half. She didn't do anything. What kind of threat was she? He said, she was just a child. Hundreds of thousands of people are running for their lives. They need basic resources. They need support. They need food. They need medicine. They need prayers. Disease is spreading and clean water is scarce and food is running out. And without immediate humanitarian intervention, millions of people are going to die. These aren't poor people. These are people like you and I and no one seems to care. The people of Iraq and Syria are losing hope. I believe hope is an important American value. We have hope. These people have lost hope. They shouldn't have to wait for the conflict to stop they shouldn't have to wait for their homes and schools and hospitals to be rebuilt. They shouldn't have to wait for the international community to negotiate a compromise. They shouldn't have to wait for people in America to understand the full heartbreaking reality of their plight. There's one thing I know about a crisis like the one that's happening in the Middle East, it's this. When people are dying, you don't need to ask more questions or weigh the cost of inconvenience or to debate the politics. You simply need to help. Although I'll never in my wildest imagination fully understand what they're going through. I cannot afford to allow that to numb me into forgetting about their pain and suffering. If we truly understand this truth that underneath the conflict obscured by politics and fear 
are people who desperately need our help, then we'll do more than just watch our television screens in disbelief or just say, oh, isn't that a shame? We'll do something. We'll move beyond guilt and pity and start practicing an authentic brand of compassion, one that actively meets people where they are instead of simply hoping that someone else will do the job. Millions of Syrian and Iraqi refugees are staring into the face of death, uncertainty, and utter hopelessness. We need to help now.